Okay, Ruler, settle down. Ruler School is brought to you by Odyssey Games, where you can go to get pre-orders of all the upcoming Force of Will sets, as well as releases of previous sets after they come out. CCGprime.com with over 100,000 Force of Will singles, as well as out-of-print boxes from the past, and TCG accessories, as well as FowlLibrary.com, a wonderful resource for deck lists, article discussions, and more. Check them out at FowlLibrary.com, as well as these amazing patrons. Special thanks to guest lecturer patrons Shu Kong Fu, Vite Ramen, and Maxime Van He. Thank you for your support. Class is in session. Hey the rulers, Zemo73 here bringing you our last New Frontiers feature match on the channel. Uh, we are playing uh, myself on a basic take on Dragon Power, Dragon Flame, and Kyle taking Fire Hero for a spin with Sword Faria one last time uh, before the Wanderer uh, transition at our locals and therefore uh, Fire Hero is combo banned with Faria. So two red aggro-ish kind of decks going at it, trying to show off what kind of the new mechanics look like for Dragon Flame and get you a sense of where you can kind of start looking for a uh, Dragon Flame flame as you um, start to build with him. So we're going to go ahead and jump right in. Uh, Kyle is on the coin here, so he'll start with uh, actually three will on his opening turn, uh, which is um, a lot. <laughs> so we'll have to see exactly how I can keep up with that. Um, obviously, six H stone and things like that will help. So we'll see exactly uh, whether that comes through or if um, I just get blown out by uh, Leneth and Flame Hero. We'll see how it goes. Obviously, Dragonflame wants to generate that dragon power by ordering as much as possible. This is th good with things like Daji uh, and Zuge Leong. Um, it also Pang Tong to be able to duplicate it. Uh, I do have board clears, which is nice, but the problem is I do also have to contend with Lenith, which is not super great. Um, we go for a first turn uh, Stone of Atoms, and we do see Coin plus Atoms plus... Um, the will from the sword getting a coin uh, counter on it to go ahead and go straight into Leneth uh, Scorching Hero. This is a little bit of a greedy first turn, but it certainly does put the pressure on, especially considering how the Scorching Hero now has a summit, uh, um, Eternal. Uh, so it's this idea of like, yeah, I'm not going to clear the board, but I am going to at least put some pressure on board to try to rush down next turn. Um, don't want to make that white will go to waste. Uh, we do see at end of turn, Daji, who's going to mill a dragon to the graveyard and burn him for five. Then we get to go into my turn. From there, we're going to order into a Zuge Leong. Zuge Leong's going to burn me for two and produce another red will, which is nice. Uh, and so then we can use uh, call stone from there. Hit another magic stone of Adam's. And then use, I think we're going to use the red just to apply some more pressure. Using Daji to destroy itself. Little uh, sacrificial Guinevere here, essentially. Does get that dragon to the graveyard, or the mechanized flame soldier to the graveyard, which is nice when you're using things like mechanized blade dragon, uh, because they count to trigger. You know, you can discard them, have them enter dragon power, di manually banish, but then that'll trigger blade warrior or flame soldier to come back in. Instead, we're just going to use that flooding red to go ahead and play Apostle of Dragon Power, who's a nice little 5 7, but it's only going to get bigger as we get more dragon power here. The main reason why we don't want to swing in is because um, there's a very real chance of crack back here, uh, but because of the fact that he's already burned flame hero we feel a little bit not as concerned about a second flame hero coming down so it's better for us to have this kind of blocker wall especially considering how zuge leong is currently a 9-9 so it's bigger than his stuff um we're going to see a uh magna come down here uh using the uh god's um blessing side of him to put a counter onto his ruler which lets him cheat out a hero do you see that faria come down here we're going to become the linchpin of the excalibur decks moving into wanderer format here and now we get to go get um number uh the first moons which are at free value absolutely as well as being able to produce other wills so there is very much a chance that we could see a second leteth come down here uh if, which would be devastating <laughs> Thankfully, we do have Dragonflame enters the game of God, so we can do some work if we need to. Do you see that first boon come down here? Gonna mill the top three cards of the deck. And don't worry, we're gonna shift those onto the field. Uh, we see a Gradius. A, another God's Breath. 
uh, or sorry, no, two Gradiuses and a uh, Essence of Odin. The Essences can be played outside of Zeus, they just won't generate tokens, but that doesn't mean they aren't good cards. Kyle deciding whether or not he wants to swing in here, knowing that he's got a 5-7 and a 9-9 nine, nine currently on board to deal with. Potentially worried about a crack back on his end if he decides to get in, especially since both of my guys do have flying. Um, although, because they have flying, there might be a reason to just go ahead and just swing in. Um, because, again, none of his guys can block. Both of my guys have flying, and we're pretty secure there. Ultimately, as we look here at the aggression, I mean, the pressure on board is 7, 15, 27 damage. Um, and he is staring down um, right now at this point in time 14 on the crackback, but I can produce a lot. He does have the open well for Gradius, which is helpful against something like Zuge Leong. Um, I mean, it'll at this point in time, would be able to kill both of them. And even if Zuge Leong gets bigger, the Gradius can turn off the pump there, which is really nice. Um, so being a little bit more reactive, especially since he has Faria, who could potentially block something, stop the damage, and gain a bunch of life when he's dealing against a fellow red deck, might be the play. Ultimately, no, just choosing to pass the turn. Before recovery, we're going to see another Daji come down here off the top deck. This is great. Sends another Dragon to Grave. Burns him five. Also sets it up so that this turn he can't produce um, any, uh, or can't gain any life, which is nice. Sets him down to three grand um, and puts us in a pretty solid state. We hit a Villain Stone off the top there. Move into combat. We're going to go ahead and swing in uh, for, at this point in time, nine in the air with um, Zuge Leong. So we do have that Gradius there. Whether or not it's going to get used right now is, is a good question. The other question is though like the gradius is nice but it also is like well then i get to unorder and i'm tapped out and when, what's the crackback from this dragon potentially going to be ultimately does choose to use the gradius here to kill the zugi and leong we're going to say that's fine especially considering some of the stuff that we have in the hand that you'll see in just a second um using that stone villain stone is a nice grab here actually because of what we have in hand go ahead and do uh ordering we do this sequence a little bit incorrect, and I'll talk about that here. We do um, Dragonfly Metrics, the Game of Gods, to remove, uh, to pump up my dragon uh, and remove all of the um, abilities from the Lenith, and then we order into a Pang Tong. The sequencing here is actually inappropriate, so we did this so that we could still kill his entire board. However, if we had ordered the Pang Tong while leaving up the Dragonfly Mentors of the Game of Gods, we could stack the triggers so that we gain five Dragon Power, then double it, and then cast Dragon Enters the Game of Gods before the burn happens. So then my dragon becomes a 40-40, and it's just lethal. Um, but a little bit of a misplay there. And again, uh, this is why Jeremy doesn't play Turn Things Sideways decks. <laughs> because we miss uh, aggressive lines like that to be able to close out the game. But that would have been a line here where, again, because of the way that the stack works, or the chase works, um, you stack it so that the last thing to resolve is the, burn, the board burn, and then you go uh, gain five dragon power, then double it to go from five to 10, 10 to 20. The dragon now is a 22,700. 20, and then you can, before the burn resolves, still do dragon flame enters the game of gods, both modes, remove the abilities from the Lenith, burn it to death, um, then make the dragon huge and swing in for 40. The other reason why, uh, so the Faria gets to survive here, but she doesn't have uh, the ability to gain life because of the Daji, so she, she just has the damage negated. 
So I've given uh, Kyle a little bit of an, uh, an opening here because of the fact that I, you know, misplayed that sequence. So it's just a matter of does he have a way to close it out? You see, he does have still that Odin enters the game or Odin essence, which is pretty solid. Puts another counter on Farias, meaning she can judgment, but he doesn't have a lot of other heroes. So it doesn't really do much there. There is something to be said about potentially putting a counter on the Faria in case he has another Leneth just to be able to straight up protect it as soon as the Leneth comes down. But ultimately, um, just decided to set up... Uh, judgment for a future turn producing four will off of the first boon to go ahead and cast another faria from the rfg thanks to the first boon from before uh no more first boons in play but he does have the two farias um there is a world where he could swing with one of the farias into the dragon to get it off board uh, and gain some life back ultimately though does choose to just go for face i think debating talking about what's on board the question is if he gains life he'll still kill my things so then like the crackback isn't nearly as aggressive um does go ahead and sw just swing in for 12 takes me down to 26 and then leaves up the other faria What kind of follow-up is there? He does have, like I said, he does have um, the Gradius. He does have Essence of Odin. Um, so he does have some good things to be able to potentially set himself up to survive through the turn and punish a crackback. Daji during the upkeep is going to go ahead and draw two uh, and discard one. Dragonflame enters the game of Gaunts, goes down. Callstone with the Pang Tong. Hit the Magic Stone of the Six Sage. Starting off the bat, let's say, you know what, let's go ahead and push that lethal. Let's go, do, try to do the 20. Gradius comes down, get that out of the way, uh, is going to kill the 10-7. Um, there is a world where I, if I had still had that Dragon Flame enters the Game of Gods, or well, you see I have another one in hand, I could um, remove all of the abilities from the Faria that's still there and give the Dragon plus 20 plus 20. So um, that actually would still be lethal even through Dragon, even through Gradius, um, because it would gain the plus 20 plus 20 uh kill the faria that can block because it remove all of her abilities uh so she can't negate damage uh and then swing in for 20 for lethal um so again jeremy doesn't know how to play red decks <laughs> just missing lethal lines here uh, unintentionally flashing in another daji it's gonna go ahead and burn him for another five if i can successfully mill a dragon And then this is a world where um, you'll see you'll see in a second. Uh, um, so I do uh, send a tiger and dragon to the graveyard just to get it out of the way. That's a little bit of deck thinning. Uh, I have another tiger and dragon in hand. Um, he's at five life, so I could just swing at his face with Pang Tong. Uh, I get way too flashy here, and I try to swing into the Faria because he can't get any life this turn, so that the Pang Tong dies. So have the ability to unorder. Uh, and here's where I absolutely forget the fact that uh, Essence of Odin is right in front of me. Misplay and play the Tiger and Dragon um, to try to shoot him in the face for 20 damage when I only need to do five. Completely forgetting that there's an Essence of Odin. So if I had done that line where I just swing at his face with Pang Tong, if he does Essence of Odin to stop it, the Pang Tong dies and his damage and gates and then i get a free tiger and dragon because there's no gradius left um and i can kill things that way so jeremy once again just absolutely throwing lines that he does not need to throw uh because i don't know how to play red decks <laughs> leaving myself with just a peg tong staring down 2400 damage from two farias uh completely checked out ready to and you see there's like i think there's triple flame hero in that hand of his so it's just like absolutely set up to crush me um especially since he could play a flame hero and then do judgment um he goes to cast the magnet but we remember that's because he had cast it earlier so there's no way for him to cast it right now Gets to counter on one of the Farias here, which is, again, that setup. I mean, I'm tapped out, so it doesn't really do anything. He does call Stone here uh, so that he can get a second white uh, to be able to cast that Duet of Light. Um, 
I'm not sure he really needed that uh, if he had Flame Hero in hand. Um, but he does cast Duet of Light to be able to reanimate a 3-drop, which gets him the Lenith, which gets him a Flame Hero. <sighs> and then, uh, I believe... Um, so then he burns my board, right, which gets the Dashi off board. She's not going to do anything. Um, but he's still only dealing 2,400 damage, so he's got to find a way to get another Guidance Counter onto something. And he's currently at just red. So the question is, he knows there's a line where he's going to get to red. How is he going to do it? And just like this, as you'll see in just a second, um, we have another God's Breath which is just going to put another counter onto the flame hero, give everybody plus 200 in swiftness, and swing in for lethal. So Jeremy doesn't know how to play red decks, leaves himself way open, misses lethal three times, and then loses the game. Such is the, such is the life of Jeremy when he tries to pilot red stuff. Going into game two here, hoping to have a little bit stronger start and remembering what Odin, uh, Odin's essence does so that I don't get punished, especially now that I have coin and can do something like a Daji order on one into a Zuge Leong order on two, uh, which is very, very aggressive. It's 1400 damage uh, with a, with a follow-up will to be able to do some stuff. We see that white will being used for Schrodinger's call, gets him a hero, probably setting him up for a Lenith. Yep, so he's ready for the next turn. Um, you just always want to have, if possible, at least while you know the interaction isn't unbanned, uh, having the Lenith. Is, is very very helpful seeing if he has anything else during his turn with that red he does have that gradius though which is really nice to be able to punish the zuge leong um good good snap on him uh we'd see a order dodge at end of turn this is to mill and get another dragon we see a mechanized blade dragon that then comes to hand uh burns him for five uh, and gets me five dragon power which is great You'll see me indicate that here in just a second. Call stone, magic stone of the six sage. Use Daji to crack herself, draw to discard one. Discard the mechanized flame soldier. Exactly what we wanted here to be able to start doing things with mechanized dragons. Um, go up to 10 dragon power. Forgot to indicate the five before. Burn myself for two, have a floating red. Try to move into combat and swing for 14. He goes, as you go into combat, we'll go ahead and just Gradius her. Uh, I do have that Dragon Flame enters the game of gods, but I then I realized, oh, she wouldn't have swiftness anyway, so that actually isn't worth my time to keep her around um, because she'd gain swiftness and then Gradius would remove it. So though she'd survive, um, she wouldn't be able to attack. So I'd rather be like, oh, you know what? Let's go ahead and just save that Dragon enters the game or Dragon Flame enters the game of gods for something else, which honestly makes me uh, sad that I grabbed Mechanized Blade Dragon instead of Mechanized Shield Dragon, because if I'd grabbed Shield here, I could use the red, cheat it in, get another 10 Dragon Power, pump her up higher, give her an extra 1,000 of defense to survive the Gradius, get the Flame Warrior, be able to swing in, and have the big Zuge Leong, I mean, 19-19 on his turn to be able to survive, which uh, even would survive a Lenith, I mean, obviously would survive a Lenith clear. Gets the two counters, which draws him a card. Seeing a uh, God's Breath to give the counter. I just know that at the end of it, you know, my stuff's going to get cleared here. So then we see a Faria. And this is kind of the explosiveness that is possible with this Faria deck um, when you have the Faria in hand. You grab the number uh, first boons. Uh, first boon can then produce the will to be able to play Lenith. Lenith can then grab Flame Hero. Um, and, and so just like with one will, suddenly he put all this pressure on board and still has follow-up will. It's a little bit insane, and it's kind of one of the reasons why... Um, this, is, this is the example of like the type of interaction or the type of sequencing that's kind of led to Flame Hero seeing the Wanderer ban, um, because just, just to take this line out of the format... Um, because it's not not necessarily fun to have your teeth kicked in like this. <laughs> At least this quickly. Um, uses the will from first boon to be able to cast Lenneth. That like, gets him Flame Hero. Flame Hero is going to burn that dragon off the board. Now the question is, does he have a way to get another counter to kill, you know, to try to push in for lethal this turn? Um, e even without, I mean, the fact that this board exists and I have 
two will total to be able to play with on my turn because these things are going to stick around it is very gross uh, combined by the fact that he has manifestation of the sacred spirit so now he gets to put a counter on it give it plus four plus four and an additional plus two in swiftness so overall this entire board is 3700 damage uh, on his turn two after i've taken a single turn uh, and they all stick around so if i i have one turn with two will to be able to clear this uh otherwise uh at, to be able to clear it and protect myself from any kind of potential burn follow-up um, to try to survive the game. <laughs> but really just, Kyle just really in that last hurrah showcasing the explosive potential of the uh, flame hero and my, um, we will send it off into the night uh, to see it go. So we see an ordered Daji here just to burn him for five, take him down to three grand, say, look, I'll get that mechanized armor dragon now, please, that I should have gotten earlier. Uh, and then we'll call stone after the shuffle. Get up to 15 dragon power. Maybe call stone. Call stone and extend the hand because we have no way to keep that board clear and we had a great run so there you guys have it that is the match a little bit faster this week hope you guys enjoyed it we'll put up the dragon flame deck profile later this week to kind of get you started and until next time this is dmo 73 saying class dismissed